<laughs> she's not Valentina, but she's from Spain, uh, from Bilbao, uh, from uh, Silk uh, Valleguin, and uh, she's the head of the uh, cell biology and stem uh, units. Stem cell units. Thank you for the introduction. And Maria, which I guess is common enough, so both in Italy and Spain. Anyway, so thank you very much, Professor Sasso and Laura, first of all, for allowing us to participate in the program, but also for the invitation to come here today. It's really a very helpful program. Um, so I am a team leader in, in the SL Biology uh, program, and my lab is in the first floor with all these glass windows. And, um, you are not in the Frank Gehrig's <laughs> museum, unfortunately. No, I wish, but no, I, no. I would have because I guess it's that Bilbao is best known for, for the fantastic museum, yeah. so you have an opportunity to, to go. I, I truly recommend it. So that's in, in Northern Spain. So um, I, will go, I will be brief as well. I will introduce a little bit the center and what we do. So the center uh, describes itself as saying that the goal is to bring discoveries to society by partnering with industry. And in fact, the center is located within the Technological Park, which is <coughs> on the outskirts of Bilbao. And the relationship with the companies is very much encouraged, although we do basic research, but we have collaborations with companies as well. And I think that that's something very fruitful for everybody, so a lot of it is really translational research. Um, who we are, so it's actually it's a very small center with respect to the enormous number that we have been here in some of the partners this morning. Uh, we are 150 people, but we come from 17 nationalities. We started just nine years ago, uh, but it's a very dynamic center um, with a lot of young people with the state of the art facilities. So it's really, uh, I think that it's a very nice place to work. Of course, so the seminars, data club, everything is in English, so because particularly for, because of this international atmosphere, so I think it's uh, very attractive for young people. This photo is for the Oma Forest, which is very, uh, I think it's very nice as a big uh, the work of the artist Eva Roda. So, Biomuna is focused on human health, we work in oncology, and uh, um, the idea is to find better ways to prevent, diagnose, and treat disease. And I work in the cell biology and stem cell units, and of course we have all the common facilities that can be found in molecular and cellular biology departments with tissue culture for lines, primary, P2. We do mostly work with human uh, samples, both normal and tumor samples, who have a relationship with the hospitals uh, nearby. Um, Sorter, uh, confocal microscopy, animal uh, house, etc. And in addition, we also have good technical platforms. Uh, in order to do, perform uh, genome analysis, macroarray, proteomics, metabolomics, as well as uh, structural biology, and all that is in-house. So again, the students and all the scientists are exposed to a variety of uh, techniques, and the seminars also reflect this uh, wide interest in, in the center. Um, Regarding the training opportunities, uh, of course we have weekly seminars, data clubs, all the students are encouraged to do the presentations when the, the Leonardo da Vinci uh, uh, stays during the placements and of course have to present to everybody in English, so that, that's um, always a, a nice challenge. Um, the PhD, so some of the students as we will see um, um, that they, the, we, don't, we are not the university or research center, but the students uh, become part of the, of the UPB, they register at the UPB and they defend the thesis eventually there in the University of the Basque Country. In addition, we also have Erasmus students, so there are always people coming from other parts of Europe as well. Uh, there is a small PhD committee, which I belong to, and as well the students get health and safety induction to kind of um, be informed about the proper health and, and safe ways of working in, in the lab. Um, and of course, the students will be implicated directly into uh, the latest science and, and, and technology going on in, in the center. And this is a very hands-on experience because and it works both ways, not just for the students that have access um, to their own project or participating uh, with uh, directly helping another postdoc or in the lab. Uh, but also, um, because there are small groups and it's more centered, the team leaders get very much in a very uh, involved relationship with the, with the students, helping them, um, and so in addition to, to promote, which as uh, uh, Professor Sasso was saying earlier, the latest of recommendations I think are key uh, to get, you know, as use this as a platform to, to get on with 
with uh, perhaps PhD students, if that's what you wish to do, and in fact, um, this, the, this has been the case until now, as you can see. So we have participated in the program since 2007 with the first student, Margarita Yaboni, who is just finishing her PhD in Naples, and then Marcella, I have a her picture disappear, I have some problems with the, with the transfer from Mac to, to PC. Then Giacomo Domenici, who actually came to my lab, these are the, uh, on the top the students that have been coming to, uh, straight to my lab, and Giacomo Domenici um, came as a placement, then uh, managed to find some uh, money to support him as a, through a collaboration with the company, and then he has obtained a grant from the local government, from the, uh, the government of the past country, who is now doing a PhD in, in my lab. And Jessica Pucello, for example, who came later, again after the placement, she found another four months, and then she, I offered her a position, but she wanted to, do, to work in a company, so now she's working in Milan. So there are always different, different options. Another lab um, hosting students has been the lab of Robert Kipta, and his English. Uh, there are three different students have been Ana Lucia, Rafaela, Francesco working. Ana Lucia is now doing the PhD in Alicante and Rafaela in Barcelona, so they all have managed to find some, something else to do afterwards. <coughs> and we have another three of the names that they are that I put that people, people that also applied, but then before starting the placement, actually they found something else, um, a PhD. And again, this reflects the high quality of the students within the program, that even before they have a chance to, to even do the program, sometimes they find other options like a PhD already and they decide to go ahead, which I think is, is a great opportunity for them. So what we do, um, the group of, uh, again, these are the two groups that we have been hosting placements during the last few years, and the group of uh, uh, Robert Kripke is interested in wind signaling pathway, and they do basic research, particularly focusing on neural stem cell differentiation and also prostate cancer, <coughs> the idea is that the ultimate goal will be that this will provide sort of a strong support uh, that will lead to the, a knowledge that will lead to therapies for uh, neurodegeneration disease and also for metastatic disease in cancer. In the case uh, in my lab, um, we are interested particularly in breast cancer and cancer stem cells and the idea is that cancer stem cells can be uh, potential new therapies or, or new therapeutic targets, sorry. So we have been working on both breast cancer as well as normal mammary gland and the role that hormones play in, in, in the maintenance of the stem cells as well in the development of resistance which is one of the a very serious clinical problem in the context of cancer as well as in the role that the microenvironment is playing in the development and progression of the disease. So I'm not going to go into detail of the, pro of the project because of the time issues. Actually, I had deleted the signals, but I somehow they have some magic and I don't know how. Um, I just wanted to summarize this by saying that one of the major things that we have just published recently in which the student Giacomo Domenici um, is the second author in, in, in that publication is that we identify that even the development of resistance to tamoxifen, this is driven by SOX2 overexpression, which is actually activating the wind signaling pathway in cancer stem cells. So the idea is that if you want to target cancer, it's important not just to focus on cells that are proliferating at the cancer cells, but also to pay attention to the cancer stem cells that due to the property, they are the ones capable not only to initiate the tumor, but also to regenerate and to give rise to the recurrence of the disease. So this is something that now um, is becoming very much important, this idea of combinatorial therapy, not just targeting a particular signaling pathway, but a combination of those. And I guess this is also reflecting something that we have been discussing to sometime during the day, that uh, this idea of interdisciplinary, you know, that sometimes it can be useful to know about something, but then you might you know, find different ways of combination, collaborating with other people to attack a problem, having uh, a combination of approaches. And just to finish, I would like to say thank you again to the program, to the Leonardo da Vinci program, to all the students that have participated, and to you for your attention. Thank you.
very much to Maria for also keeping the time and uh, answering the presentation. Any question for, for her? So I noticed that actually most of the uh, people then continue with the PhD. Yes. Right? So I should encourage them uh, a lot. This is, this is very good. Also in Spain, uh, is it easy for, let's say, a person that did a, a place where they see uh, your lab then to find opportunities in Spain? You can give advice or... Yes, um, this has changed a little bit, unfortunately, over the years. Um, I do have said that, I mean, you have seen that out of the seven, everybody has found, it's the one that, because they didn't want to, uh, has found a PhD. Um, lately, the situation, the economic situation has changed a little bit, but at the end, the grants still exist, for example, in the Basque country, you know, the, the, the funding has been maintained, and because the students are in general very good quality, very high quality, they are well prepared and then they get these strong support letters and that experience, they always have managed to get grants. So I guess it's as always if um, there is always a small percentage of excellence that maintains. In percentage, let's say in Basque countries or in Catalonia or in the rest of Spain, there are more more opportunities or less or similar? Since we well, have you have a different uh, economic system. So. Yes, I mean, the, uh, Spain is a little bit um, you know, that there's different autonomy, so the, the emphasis in, in research is slightly different in different areas. I mean, I will say, uh, you know, you don't, I don't want to, to show off, but in the Basque country, for example, I think that is better than in some other regions in Spain, with our main names. Uh, having said that, you know, it still is it's relatively small region, it's a small center. So it's a good center with good state of the art, but the limitations that this is a small center. I mean, that's,